I'm, I'm bald, so. So here's the thing. Your, I'm, I'm 53, and so racism is, is generational, meaning that racism has changed over the years from what it used to be in the 60s and the 70s, even in the 80s. Racism these days is more subtle. My concern, my fear, I have a 30-year-old son and a 24-year-old daughter. My concern for them is that this generation is angry, but this generation isn't getting together to collectively do something about the issue. So while my generation was about the awareness, you have to be aware, you have to go out there, you have to create the movement. We would sit in, sit out, stand up, stand out. This generation is like, well, I really don't need to do that because I can sit anywhere I want to. I can live anywhere I want to. I can go anywhere that I want to. This is the thing, the mentality of the individuals who practice racism has not changed. The only thing that's changed is the way in which they express it. Racism is something that is taught. You are taught, don't like that person because they're black. If you look at two little children, three, four, five children playing in a park, they want to play because they're all little kids. They get older and they're told, no, you can't do this. Timmy can play with Jaquanda. It just doesn't happen. Chica, get out of the road. This is New York. So the issue is that this generation needs to recognize, even though you think you can live anywhere, you try moving into an all-white neighborhood where they really don't want you, the cross will come. They will still burn it. So it's not that we can truly live anywhere we want to. It's just that we have more areas that we can live. The reason that we're not as dedicated as a group to fighting the issue of racism is because before we were all subjected to live in one location, in one area. We supported each other in our black businesses. That's why you had black millionaires. What do we do now? We give other people our money. If all black people stopped going to the movie theater, guess what? None of those movies that are hits would be hits. Why? Because ain't nobody go to the movies like black folks. We spend our money. But we don't go to see our movies. We go to see other people's movies. And so they say, since nobody goes to see black movies, then they go, we're not going to make any black movies. Back in the day when you could only go to the all Negro theater, guess what? Everybody went. Everybody supported it. Now that we have choices we've left our people behind so my recommendation my suggestion my commitment my prayer my hope for your generation is love what you're doing but you got to recognize that the power is in the numbers the power isn't doing it together the power isn't being a collective cohesive unit which we're not other races recognize that about us and so from even a financial perspective of how we spend money that's where the racism comes into play they won't go into our stores but they want our money they won't come into our neighborhoods but they want us to spend money in their neighborhoods they won't come into a black car dealership but who are the ones who drive some of the very very expensive cars so it's not that we don't have the money we just need to be educated about how we spend it because we have more power than we realize we just don't know how to utilize and wield that power if black people nobody else but black people decided that they were going to stop for one day a 24-hour period to stop spending they would be amazed at the impact they would have but no matter how much black people get together and say they're going to do that there's always somebody somewhere who was like I'm gonna to go to that gas station anyway I'm gonna to go to that place anyway and that's why it doesn't change and it doesn't end but make no mistake racism in America is alive and well it has not died it has not changed this experience that my daughter had three weeks ago in Stone Mountain shows me that there's a whole other generation of people out there pur uh, proposing racism supporting it they truly believe in it the next time you're in a mall and a white person bounces into you see if they say sorry they don't even see you they don't know you're there. So it's not that they're being rude. Honestly, they don't see you. It's called being invisible. I'm not American. This has been an amazing experience for me coming to this country as an adult, having children in a society that I don't know anything about, coming from a country where everybody is black and we don't refer to people by color. You have to learn how to adapt to this environment. My request of your generation is explore outside the boundaries of America because what it is that you're trying to do it may not necessarily survive here but there are other places where you can truly live be powerful be wonderful be free but having to do that in America is going to take far far more far more time far more commitment far more collective cohesive movement than this place has ever been seen and there aren't enough people who are aware of that to be able to do it together 
But understand this, racism has not died and will never die if you know the history of America.